Part 1. White Clouds. Pegasus Moon. Throne of Knowledge. The northern lands are enveloped in a bitter cold, and frigid winds are carried across the sea to the south of Adrestia. When feather white snow falls on Fodlin's locket, the fort looks as delicate as a pearl. However, beneath that snowy blanket, her throat is more treacherous than ever. Rhea, please talk to me. What are you hiding? What is the meaning of how that one looks? It is almost as though... As I said, there is nothing of which to speak. For now. At the end of this month... I read Gerald's diary. I happened upon it in his room. What? In it, he stated the reason for his departure. The baby, thought to have died in the fire, has returned to us. Gerald realized that you had done something to the child and decided to flee. What did you do to that baby, Rhea? Nothing questionable, I should hope. Setteth enough. They will be here shortly. No more, I beg of you. I will take our dear professor to the holy tomb. There, I should be able to see our dearest wishes to fruition. When I was young, I heard her voice there. I'm sure of it. You may enter. I have been awaiting your arrival, Professor. Now that you have received sacred power from the Goddess, there is somewhere you must pay a visit to at once. You must go to the Holy Tomb so that you may receive a divine revelation from the Goddess. The Holy Tomb is where the Goddess sleeps. This monastery was originally built for the purpose of protecting that hallowed temple. Only a select few know of it, but there is a legend about Seros and the Holy Tomb. Saint Seros, the first soul to be gifted power from the Goddess, received her revelation there. She was told that it was her sacred duty to save the people of Fodlin, and that she must use her power wisely in order to lead them. The words that were handed down to Seros from the Goddess will likely fall upon your ears as well. Prepare yourself to go at once. There may you find out why you were blessed with such power. There will be a ceremony at the Holy Tomb. It is then that you will receive the Goddess's revelation. You may share this mission with your students. It is said that when Seros received the revelation, she had holy warriors by her side protecting her. Your students, who have followed you and fought alongside you through the darkest of times, are well suited to stand by you for the ceremony. Of course, as the leader of the Church of Seros, I will be by your side as well. The Holy Tomb is a sacred temple that is sealed off from the rest of the world. There is nothing to fear. Even if something were to happen, I am more than capable of protecting myself. Much has changed, but your duty has not wavered. Steal your mind for the ceremony and prepare your students well. Professor, a moment. I am sorry that I doubted your ability. 
I deeply regret ever holding such a view of you. It is obvious to me now that you are extraordinary. Do you doubt your own power, even now? I suppose that's only natural. You've lived your whole life knowing next to nothing about yourself. Not even Geralt could have possibly known all there is to know about you. But I wonder, are you satisfied with that? Are you content, not knowing who you are? Or do you yearn to know more? That was a foolish question, of course. You are not the sort to be complacent. So, only one more question matters. Are you ready? The truth. All of it. Learning it will doubtlessly have direct consequences on your life. I do not know what those will be. You may decide, once you learn it, that you wish you hadn't. But even if you have such regrets, you will never be able to return to ignorance. So, are you ready to know the truth? I see. That is what I wish to hear. The Archbishop continues to put her faith in you, and so you will continue to have my aid. More than that, I will put my faith in you as well, and I will do all that is within my power to help you someday reach the truth. A new path to tread. Hunting? Really? There's no way I can do this. Goddess, why couldn't I have stayed in today? Bernadetta, is this a trouble you are having? I heard that the duty to hunt is yours today. The duties all got assigned while I was holed up in my room. Do not be worrying. I can show you the way to hunt well. Oh, um, okay then. When you see a beast, you are thinking of it as an enemy. That is how prey thinks. You must think of the beasts as food. That is how the hunter thinks. So it's not an enemy, it's food. But, um, how is it food when it's still alive? You pick the vegetables from the field. Those have life too. It is the same. You take a blade in your hand and take the lives of the vegetables. You cut their stalks and harvest without mercy. They do not scream, but you are still their killer. K killer Fruit ripens and falls to the ground. The seeds sprout and a new life is born. That is life's cycle. It has cruelty, yes, but you must end life to eat. You must be killing to be living. Maybe, but I don't know if I want to be some... some kind of vegetable murderer. It is the same for rabbits, deer, pheasants. The only difference being that they cannot cry out. You must do what you must do to be living in this world. It is your task. A task? Yes, just a task. A completely mindless task. Feel it. There, in the grass. Prey is moving, just like a vegetable in the wind. Give it an arrow, just like you would give a vegetable a blade. It is just your task. Uh, right. That makes sense. It's just like cutting a stem. You are now a hunter. You have learned how to hunt. I am? I have? Oh, good! What a relief! You have understanding now, I can tell. Great! Leave it to me! I'll hunt down my prey just like their vegetables. I have belief in you. Aw, thanks, Petra. I can do this. Make way for Huntmaster Bernie! Have luck, Bernie.
look so different. You're still our professor in there, right? Did anything else change besides your hair and eyes? Are your arms bigger? How do your abs look? That's disappointing. What's even the point? Ugh. So hungry. Oh, is that you, Professor? Sorry. I'm really not feeling well this month. Even leaving my room for dinner is just too much. It's got nothing to do with your, um, changes. So, um, don't open the door, please! What the? Uh, yes? You're going to the ritual at the Holy Tomb, right? I hear that a revelation from the Goddess is expected. What if she shows herself? Oh, I'll be so jealous! I can't even imagine what it must be like inside the Holy Tomb. Well, it's probably a grave, that much is for sure, and it's likely underground. Beyond that, who knows? I can't help but wonder, though, just what kind of ritual is this? legends. Stories containing people who have a spirit living inside of them. Those spirit people have much strength. They are maybe able to fly in the air or race across the ocean. Hair that shines and eyes that glow. They have qualities that are not unlike what you are looking like, Professor. Do not have doubt, Professor. The powers you have are like the powers of the legends. Oh. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. Although, I suppose, you are something to report. For a moment, I thought you were someone suspicious. Lucky for you, I am quite perceptive. It took only that single moment for me to recognize you. <laughs> the Professor went out and got some new power. Professor... You've been granted this power by the Goddess herself. Truly, you must be a very special individual. Maybe Saros transformed before receiving her revelation too. Hmm. I haven't heard anything about that before. Maybe that part never found its way into the legend? It is told that Saros had a revelation, instructing her to use her power for good and to lead the people of Fodlin to salvation. I wonder what sort of revelation you might have, Professor. I recently had an errand to run, and so I had to pass by the office. I didn't mean to, but I overheard Lady Rhea and Sedith arguing. Actually, it was more like Sedith was interrogating Lady Rhea. People who live an inordinately long time, people whose hair changes color, and those odd heroes relics. Is Fodlan some mystical land full of inhuman creatures? You should see for yourself. I'd recommend exploring west of the Empire. Hey there. Those students of yours will soon graduate and become unreachable royalty and nobility. You should show them respect now, or you might find yourself out of a job someday. <laughs> no. One look at your students' faces, and it's apparent that would never happen. Even when your kids graduate, I bet they'll still think fondly of you. You'll always be professor to them. Professor! Huh? 
You're so strong now. I'm starting to understand why you were appointed professor. I thought I was stronger, but I still have such a long way to go. Oh, I will. I still plan on beating you someday. I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. I think I like this, but it's been a while, so I'm not sure. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. I would be liking that greatly. Flavor is nostalgic to me for some reason. Hmm, I'd like some more. Oh, I love this meal. How did you know? Eating is life. Literally, you die without it. And I'm always happy to share a meal with you. Um, excuse me. Yes? What is it? I'm really sorry about what I said. I shouldn't have called you scary. Even if... um... you are! I said it again! I'm sorry! It is nothing I haven't heard before. I am well aware of my austere nature. And I am accustomed to the commentary it brings. I do confess, however, that I was slightly hurt to see you flee from me in such abject terror. <sighs> Don't be sad! I'll never do it again! I promise! But... um... I've been wondering... Were you really writing a farewell letter? Ah, that. No, actually. I was composing a fable centered around Saint Indec. I didn't know you wrote fables. But what's it about? Saint Indec, one of the four saints. He was an extraordinarily shy person. It is said that he spent most of his life in solitude, unable to open his heart to anyone. I like him already. He was, after all, a man who hid himself away at the bottom of a lake. Um, what's that about a lake? Hmm? Nothing. Now, something else to know about Saint Indec is that he had incredible skill with his hands. And that skill made him beloved by the people because he constantly applied it to their benefit. The moral of the story is that shortcomings can be made up for with talent and kindness. I like it. But I don't have any talents like that. I can't even imagine being that helpful to people. Saint Indec must have been really gifted. Don't be so quick to dismiss your abilities. You and he are actually alike in more ways than one. 
You possess Index Crest, after all, do you not? Um, yes, I do. You really think we're alike? Now I want to know all about him. Do you think I could read your fable when it's done? Absolutely. Index example is something that we can all learn from. Thanks so much. I'm excited to see it. Good deal. Hey, Professor. You seem... different. Lots of things seem... different around here lately. I've noticed it. Have you? something as a consequence of gaining these powers, did you? Oh, I see. Well, that makes me feel better. But still, be careful. Okay. Long ago, Saint Seros was gifted with a divine revelation from the Goddess, as well as incredible power. Is that what happened to you too, Professor? No way! The Professor transformed before receiving any kind of divine revelation, right? Still, I wonder, does the fact that you've changed really mean you've been granted some kind of power? If that's the case, then what sort of revelation can be gained from the ritual? I'm guessing the revelation will just be a gentle reminder to use this new power to save the people of Fodlin. What else is there to say? You don't actually believe we're going to hear the voice of the goddess, do you? Ugh. How are you, Professor? Did Hanuman make his I will do no harm speech or promise this won't hurt a bit when he asked to study you? Both? I have a bit of research I'd like to perform. Nothing so crass as Hanuman's poking, prodding, and drawing of blood. No, I wish to investigate Crest Power itself. Crest Power must have some kind of limit, right? Lady Rhea says any limits must be the protection of the Goddess, but that doesn't quite answer it for me. Hmm? Who oh, Professor! Ah, I'm sorry. That was rude. I didn't recognize you for a second. <laughs> I guess you're right. If I look hard, I can still tell it's you. Right. Huh? I always knew there was something special about you. You've only gotten more and more extraordinary the longer I've known you. That transformation was just the beginning, wasn't it? I have a feeling that things will only grow more dire from here on out. Right. Ah! Professor! Sorry! You gave me a shock. Your hair and eye color are completely different! You just don't look like yourself anymore. <laughs> of course, you're right. I'm just being silly as usual. Notice if one person doesn't sing, will they? <laughs> May my song reach the goddess in the sky.
Excuse me. You haven't a thing to worry about. You have been gifted the power of the goddess. Furthermore, you have overcome the death of your father, Geralt. And you have destroyed countless of our wicked foes. I am proud. So very proud of who you have become. <laughs> Once we finish the ritual at the Holy Tomb, all will be well. I adore them. Furthermore, I... you would, please allow me a closer look at your face. Those beautiful shining eyes and silken hair so similar to my own. Oh dear, please excuse my rudeness. I forgot myself for a moment. It is only that we haven't had a chance to speak privately since you were blessed with the power of the goddess. I hope I have not caused you any discomfort. Oh, I do not know what to say. I'm overjoyed that you feel that way, but... Well, to be frank, that is not like you, is it? Still, no matter how I wish to strengthen the bonds between us, it is important that I not overstep. Yes, as souls blessed by a connection to the progenitor god, the bonds between us are truly unbreakable. Just as the Goddess blessed you with her own power, I too received her divine protection long, long ago. Though different, our fates are entwined. Yes, I am certain there is much you still don't understand. Just know that truth has a way of revealing itself in time. If you experience any further changes, please know that you can rely on me to guide you. Sedith and Flayne are also here to support you however they can. Dear child, may the goddess protect you always. Hmm. Ah, it is you. I am sorry, but I have a lot on my mind. I would prefer to be alone right now. Professor, how long have you been standing there? I didn't see you. I was just sorting through Captain Gerald's belongings. I haven't made much progress. I keep finding things that bring back memories. Clearing out this room of his belongings again, it's... It's not easy. Professor! Oh, Professor, I am so happy! Your new hair and eye color suit you well. We make quite the pair. But recently, I sense that things are a bit strained between Lady Rhea and my brother. She wants to do something at the Holy Tomb. I do not know what, but... Hmm. Whenever it has concluded, I hope they will return to their friendship, as it has always been. Professor. Are you positive? Really? Your appearance is due to the influence of the Crest of Flames? Intriguing. Unfortunately, I have found no record of Nemesis's hair and eye color ever changing. However, 
If that transformation was brought on in part by the power of the crest, that would be most, well, I suppose interesting is too small a word. Still, it would be an absolutely exceptional discovery. To know for certain, we must investigate further. So, close off. What? A full physical is in order, yes? We need to know if this transformation affected you adversely. Don't worry, it won't hurt a bit. To be honest, I cannot keep up with all that's been happening recently. Monica was actually Kranya. Tomas was actually Solon. Who were these people? What about you, Professor? You were a true ally, yes? Not the most convincing answer you could have given. Still, I simply must take you at your word. That reminds me. All things considered, this year has been rather terrible. As far as the students are concerned, next month is the last one of the school year. Next month, we will hold the graduation ceremony, though it'll be an understandably subdued affair. This month, we ask that you carry out your duties as best you can to ensure that our students remain calm. Huh? I've worked here for years, and this is the first I've heard of it. I mean, it does make some sense. Sort of. Something about it is still weird. I understand now why they'd build the monastery in the mountainous center of Fodlin. Although... When the monastery was built, the kingdom and alliance weren't even around yet. But look how cleverly it was placed right in the middle of the empire, kingdom, and alliance. That's weird, right? Huh? Recently, Professor, I feel as though you've been a bit... distant. It's like you're sort of floating above the clouds, separate from other people. And like you've got no interest at all in ever coming back down. How can I help? Hey, don't worry. I thought maybe I'd ask and see what you'd say. Edelgard and Hubert have been busier than usual. Constantly coming and going, in and out of Garrick Mach. Perhaps they are doing something in the Empire. As the legitimate heir of the Iyer family, I have not heard anything about it. But if it were significant, I am sure my father would have told me. earlier. There seem to be more people around than usual. Is there some festival this month that I'm forgetting about? Impressive. Kranya, Solon. They're dead, but we still have a glut of enemies. We still have to take down the Death Knight and the Flame Emperor. Our next battle is fast approaching. I'm ready for it. Professor, please. If he hears it from you that he needs to rest, Perhaps His Highness will listen. He's exaggerating. He thinks my color is off and that rest will cure all. I have a headache, but that's just from lack of sleep. It's not going to stop me from completing this month's mission. I must insist. Who do you think you are? I can take care of myself to do. Sir.
that is that. Each battle, a chance to grow. You fought well. Is that you've done me a great service. Professor? Whoa, when I first saw you, Professor, with that hair color and that eye color, I thought you looked kind of like Lady Rhea. Like maybe you could be related. I like the way it looks. I wonder if I could change my hair color too. Maybe if I tried hard enough. If I thought real hard about it, I mean. I might not need to, but I still wanna. A moment, please. Right. Let me consider. Sometimes, I find myself thinking I should leave Garrick Mark and return to my home, where I should have been all alone. I hear that Lady Rhea will accompany you for this month's task. She's the pillar that supports the hearts of Fodland's people. Her safety is paramount. I hope there are no complications. <sighs> Monica, no, Kranya. Kranya is dead. And so is Solon, by your hand. Taking vengeance with your own hand. I'm sure Gerald would be proud. When you changed, even the other professors were taken completely by surprise. There's a ritual at the Holy Tomb this month, isn't there? I wonder what'll happen with that. I'm sure you'll be alright, but don't lose sight of who you really are, okay? However you may change, and whatever new power goes along with those changes, you'll still be the same person deep down. Remember that. In our battle last month, we really cut the enemy down to size. But, there are other enemies we have yet to hunt down, not least the Flame Emperor. Once we've crushed them all, we can return to our peaceful lives at the Monastery. It will happen soon. I have a feeling something big is coming. Right. I... <laughs> I am sorry.
Professor. Professor, will you join me? There's something I must do. It will take a few days, but I promise we'll be back in time for the ceremony at the Holy Tomb. It's meant to be a secret, but I'm going to Enbar, the Imperial capital. There is something I must do there. Thank you, my teacher. Father, forgive me for asking this of you. I know how much pain you're in, how the burden of the throne weighs heavily on you, and so... There is no need to apologize, Edelgard. You must know <laughs> that I do not have much time left in this world. The time has come. Thank you, Father. Now, to complete the Imperial succession, you must relinquish your crown here in the throne room. The Archbishop of the Church of Saros would normally act as witness, but my professor will fill that role instead. Edelgard. From this day forward, the weight of the Empire's future shall rest upon my shoulders. All that I do will be for the benefit of the people of Fodlan. Edelgard von Hesfeld, the crown is yours. By the covenant between the red blood and the white sword, and by the double-headed eagle upon your head, I hereby pronounce you the new emperor. Are you prepared to take those responsibilities as your own? In accordance with the ancient covenant, and in keeping with the Hresfeld legacy, I swear that upon this throne, I shall use my reign to lead Fodlan to a new dawn and achieve peace for all. The Imperial succession is complete. <laughs> my daughter, I regret that I could not do more for you. When you were stolen away to the kingdom, when the Prime Minister did those horrible things, I could only watch in horror. I... I understand, Father. In those dark times, your eyes and your fists were my salvation. Within your eyes, I saw true care. And upon your fists, clenched tight with indignity, I saw the blood that dripped and fell. Even as I bled, I felt that you too must also be bleeding. Your Majesty... You must not leave your sleeping chambers in your condition. Ah, Edelgard. I did not expect to find your highness here. Prime Minister, you have misspoken. I am no longer your highness, but rather your majesty. I impossible! It is true. Edelgard is the new emperor of the Adrestian Empire. We will summon the officials <coughs> and prepare an ordinance at once, and you, Prime Minister, are dismissed. It will be some time before you are allowed to make contact with the outside world again. No! How can this be? I... <coughs> understood, Your Majesty. Edelgard, my dear El. I leave the fate of Fodlin <laughs> in your capable hands. Father, thank you for staying by my side, Professor. Now that I'm the Emperor, it's time to grasp my destiny. After the ceremony at the Holy Tomb, I must return to Enbar. This may be the last we see of each other. We are out of time, my teacher. Everyone is waiting for us. We must go. Leave it to me. I can handle it all by myself. By yourself? That's not how doing things together works. Oh, I suppose that is true. Sorry, I got quite ahead of myself. 
Would you look at that? Can you not see, Dorothea? We make a great team. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. I'm still not very fond of you. Enlightening. Nothing is impossible for us. I feel the same. Amazing, no? I work to grow.
What's the matter, Ingrid? I never hear you sigh like that. Oh, hi, Dorothea. And hello, Professor. Nothing's the matter. Well, nothing major. You don't look like it's nothing major. <laughs> then again, I suppose you always have a furrowed brow, don't you? Truth be told, there's rather a lot going on. It seems that there's always something to worry about. A childhood friend who's always causing trouble, my family, things like that. You see, I received a letter from my father recently. From Count Galatea? What a kind gentleman to have for a father. I thank you. But the content within the letter is what I find troubling. Let me see. Oh, it's a marriage proposal. For you. I've not met him, though I've heard his name here and there. He began life as a merchant, but has somehow achieved rank in court. An enterprising noble from an allied territory. It's most likely that he wants the crest of Daphnil that I bear to adorn his family name. Hmm, yes, that sounds about right. The jerk. You sound as though you know him, do you? Yes, I must admit that I know him. He tried to court me when I was a singer. Best advice I can give you, Ingrid? Stay far, far away from this guy. He's offered a sizable dowry, so I must at least consider it. For the sake of my family. Dowry? <laughs> Blood money. That's all it is. Dorothea, I... This jerk's entire fortune is soaked in blood. Do you want to rebuild your own house using that kind of money? I mean, it's all just rumors, but I think it still might be worth investigating. What do you think, Professor? Should we go check this guy out? Great! Let's tell the others! Uh, really? <sighs> okay... The more we look into this guy, the more I see he's a monster and no good for my Ingrid. No kidding. There's no denying it. We better get back to the monastery. <laughs> Hold on a minute, you brats. Hand over the girl. Surely you can't mean me. Wait, did he send them? This jerk figures he can grab Ingrid before things get too messy for him. Of course, we know the truth about him now, and he'll want to kill us and get rid of the evidence. But we'll never let him take Ingrid. Come on, let's hurry! Protect Ingrid! Don't let anyone get near her! Haha! <laughs> You'll never escape! I am Ferdinand von Eyre. I will get the victory. Oh no. Put me in there. This will do it. Yeah, it worked. Let us away. 
away. It's the least I could do. Stay focused. That's my cue. Ready. <laughs> One more success. Flame Spirit, protect me. That was nothing. Not so fast. I will not hold back. Only a fool challenges me. I'll increase the reward. Now hurry up and capture that girl. That merchant is giving orders to the bandits. I bet if we take him out, reinforcements will cease. Jump. Should I have held back? what I had to. Am I done yet? <laughs> 
Luck is always on my side. Right makes money, right? Stronger than this? All roses have thorns. You were wide open. I grasped it. How lovely. The mark of nobility. Disappointing. And I didn't even enjoy it. Ten 
unpredictable. Is that all? No hesitation. Each battle a chance to grow. See? I aim for greatness. Thanks so much. myself. Hiding? Here? They are really getting on my last nerve.
That's my cue. You can't stop me! <laughs> Winning's always nice. This is our chance. As expected. I must get stronger. <laughs> Impressive. Welcome back. Did you speak with your father? I did. I just returned to the monastery. As soon as I informed him of the suitor's unsavory tendencies, he rejected the proposal outright. Were we to form ties with such an individual, it would bode poorly for our family, regardless of the weighty dowry offered. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so glad it all worked out. Dorothea? Professor? I want to thank you. We couldn't just do nothing while you were facing a life of being married to a monster. I could never hand over my lovely Ingrid to some jerk who only wants her for her crest. Oh, do I belong to you now, rather than to myself? Hey, Dorothea, this is probably more than a little awkward considering where it came from, but... Here. A ring? Is this... No. Is it? Oh, Ingrid! I accept your offer! We'll be together forever! Stop teasing me, Dorothea. I'm trying to be sincere. I wanted to find a way to emphasize how grateful I am to you. So, I looked for something from among my things that I thought you would like. I mean, you may already have one like it, but I thought on the off chance you didn't. Ingrid, you are just adorable and I love it. But perhaps we should lend this ring to our teacher for now. Our dear teacher can best decide how to use it. You fought hard enough. You've earned the right to have a little fun. As you wish, Dorothea. I gave the ring to you, so you can do whatever you please with it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Are you surprised, Professor? This is the Holy Tomb. To think that there was such a vast space beneath the monastery all this time. It's hard to imagine that any of these enormous contraptions are of this world. This is where the goddess who created this world was laid to rest, along with her children. It is said that our creator, the goddess Sothis, sat upon this very throne. Professor, do you recognize this throne? So long. I have waited so very long for this day. Sit upon the throne. I have no doubt you will be gifted a revelation from the goddess. Well? It was supposed to be but a step away. What could possibly be missing? Stop right there! <laughs> Don't move, any of you. If you move, your lives will be forfeit. Thank you ever so much for guiding us this far. The Imperial Army will now take possession of everything in the Holy Tomb. <laughs> What's the Imperial Army doing here? Wait, does he work for the Flame Emperor? So the Flame Emperor is connected to the Empire. I never thought that possible. Edelgard, did you know about this? Yes. In fact, I gave the order. I am the Flame Emperor. I guess that's the end of play at school, Lady Edelgard. I mean, your majesty. Get to work, everyone. The Crest Stones belong to us now. And take those filthy bones, too. Insolence! You will atone for the sin of trampling on this holy resting place, Professor. Destroy these villainous traitors who dare dishonor our creator! Wait, what's the meaning of this, Edelgard? You... made use of us? Why? I'm sorry, my teacher. I cut this path, and now I must follow it. My friends, I ask that all of you stay back. It is not my intention to fight you. By order of the Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard von Hresbelk, I command you to collect the Crest Stones. If anyone attempts to stop us, kill them. I will not allow such violence from the Empire. Strike down the rebels and protect the Holy Tomb. The Crest Stones are in the caskets. Open every last one of them. The Holy Tomb must not be desecrated. Protect as many of the Crest Stones as you can. Anywhere I 
can hide. Stay focused. I will get the victory. Let us away. Put me in there. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. That was nothing. This was beneath me. The noble standard. It's the least I could do. You see? Take away every last one of those crest stones. That is enough. Do you even know what those stones are? Only a fool challenges me. More success. War feeds my body and mind. will be pleased. I've got many skills, you know.
We must all do our part. The mark of nobility. through anything. I am here. Make them tremble. The noble standard.
does pay off. I shouldn't strain myself. Much needed. Part of life. And I didn't even enjoy it. Is that wow, amazing. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Not so fast. Only a fool challenges me. One more success. What a 
not a chump. Rather be nothing. If only my research had such results. It's fine to kill those who resist. Now then, how shall I cook you? Make them suffer. to watch. Professor, I will make no excuses. Thank you for all that you did for me. In truth? No. Let's leave it at that.
So, the end has come. You have disappointed me, Edelgard. To think that a descendant of House Heresmelk would dare betray the Holy Church. So, it is my teacher who stands in my way. I always knew it would come to this. Professor, kill Edelgard at once. She is a danger to all of Fodlin. Such a rebellious heart cannot be allowed to keep beating. I will withdraw, for now. Come, Hubert. To flee is futile, wicked girl. The Church of Seros will raise its entire army against you until you have been captured and punished. You have defiled the holy tomb, dishonored the goddess, and humiliated your brethren. That crime will never be erased. Even if you burn in the eternal flames and spill all of your blood into the goddess's soil. Come, Professor. Let us return and decide upon our next course of action. Edelgard and Hubert have disappeared. They will surely return to the Empire. The Knights have been dispatched to search and investigate. If there is any movement, we will know. We cannot ignore the possibility that there will soon be open hostilities between us and the Imperial Army. When that happens, are you prepared to fight your own? If you wish to return to the Empire, I will not stop you. That is your choice to make. If Edelgard is acting afoul, then we have no choice but to strike her down! It's up to us to stop them! We have a war on our hands! I have no interest in fighting, not even for her. And yet... We supposed to decide just like that? Adi, Hubie, I'm sorry about this, but I'm siding with the professor. Her doings are wrong. It is our duty to make everything right. I am sure you all have much on your mind. I encourage you to confer with your professor and make a decision. You have until the fighting commences. Professor, I am depending on your strength for the safety of Fodlan. The leaders of the Church have misused its creed to fulfill their true desire. To rule the world. They have fooled the people of Fodlin. Long ago, they divided the Empire to create a kingdom. And then, divided that kingdom to create an alliance. They did all of this to make the masses bicker amongst themselves. They caused instability in order to reinforce their own authority. They gathered gold and lived in extravagance. How? By preying on the devotion of those who wished for the goddess's salvation. Those corrupt hypocrites cannot lead Fodlin to true peace. Their foul belief system must be torn asunder so that true wisdom may finally prevail. And so, I have decided, by order of the Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard von Hresfeld, the Empire hereby declares war on the Church of Seros. I cannot believe it. Let us recount the situation as it stands, Professor. After you returned from the Holy Tomb, the Adrestian Empire declared war upon the Church of Seros, as well as our allies. Edelgard demanded her own father relinquish the throne, and then assumed the position of Emperor. She has deemed the Church of Seros to be an evil of this world, and is calling upon the people of Fodlin to help her tear it down. I must discuss our response to this declaration with the Archbishop, after the Knights return from their investigation. Until then, watch over the students. See that they remain calm.